Hello, everybody. Welcome back to day number 19 of 100 Days of Magic, and it is pre-release day, and the good folks at Wizards, of course, a couple sets ago, has uh, let us pick up our booster boxes that we pre-ordered from our friendly local game stores, which I'm sure we all did. I know I did. And we get to pick it up on pre-release day. Now, I played in a pre-release. Uh, was not that epic. Uh, didn't have a real great showing, but got this. Apparently, Lavinia is something. So, from 100 Days of Magic today, we're going to bust a box. Because normally, I have been doing this for, for the previous 18 days. I, I've done it like early in the morning. But I knew this was coming, so I haven't done it yet. So, let's get in it. Let's make a mess here in the floor. Let's see if we can do it like this so that y'all can see the card as I throw it in there. What do we got? We have Revival and Revenge. Now, okay, let's focus up a little bit, Brian. Okay, here we go. Well, right, we're going to have to get in a little bit closer. And let's zoom in. Do we get this first card right? Because we don't want to fight at the rest of the, the box. Uh, let's see here. Of course, we got lockets and guild gates and stuff like that. We're going to look at the rares here because um, that is what we're doing. The plenty of the commons and the uncommons. We're going to see. Oh, there's a shiny Aeromunculus along with a Pestilent Spirit. That's pretty. But yeah, I chose Azorus as my guild, and it didn't. Uh, Tome of the Guild Pack. Now, I'm not exactly certain how I feel about this card. Because, uh, yeah. Something in me says I like it because I do have a tendency to kind of want to go solid gold at some times. But there is Zagana. Check her out. She's not big money, but she is one of the legends that I do need. I'll obviously be using it. Let's see if I can tilt this a little bit to get rid of some glare. Oh, look at that. That's way better. So we'll put the box over here and we'll see how much we got left. And, ooh, shiny Pegasus. Um, yeah, it's a common. We know it. By the way, there's no legendary Pegasus. I really want to make this tribe. And then, of course, we have the Guardian Project, which I don't... I haven't read four minute enchantment whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control. If it doesn't have the same... Name as another creature you control or a creature in your graveyard. Oh my god, this is for us. This is for us, people. I like it. So, in Commander, every creature you cast, you draw a card. Play a creature, draw a card. Is that worth four mana on an enchantment? I mean, we've got a four mana dude that does it. Uh, the L, I mean, there's several dudes that do it, but... You know, I... I don't know if I like it. I don't know if it's rare worthy, but Tithe Taker. Tithe Taker seems pretty good. Uh, suppose your opponent's cast goes one more activating abilities. Yeah, and then it, it replaces itself when it dies. So that's. Ooh, there's a full rare. Ghost Chamber Guardian. I got my, <laughs> my face beat in by this guy today. And then the other rare in the pack is Hero of Precinct 1. Like I said, uh, I don't think we've got any, you know, super uncommons. Now, there's a common that obviously I want about 40 of because, you know, y'all know what that is. Uh, we got Immolation Shaman, 2 mana, 1, 3, Vision of Shaman, every opponent activates an ability of an artifact creature or land that isn't a mana ability. 
they ping him. And this guy gets big and menacing. Okay. I guess I haven't built a Fiashino deck. There is Lavinia. It's our girl right there. Been looking for that one. Of course, I, I think that's... Uh, oh, they don't call it game day promo anymore. There's a full art, full promo version of her. Oh my gosh, that gold is screwing up the focus. She's really gold. And there is an incubation druid. Uh, one man of any type of land could produce. There's a one one counter on it. What? Of course, a good thing elves don't like, can't abuse the one one counter stuff, right? Because that would be. Hey, there's a blood crypt. Like a Blood Crypt, that one is probably going into the Rakdos deck. I feel like that Rakdos lays claim to it before Judith does. <laughs> then we have Deputy of Detention, which is 1-3 uh, Detention Sphere, as I understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the non-land permanent, same name. That's cool. Get rid of all them afterlife tokens. Oh, here comes the hot stepper. Rakdos. By the way, did y'all know back in Return to Ravnica, there's a little known card nobody played with, especially me, that was just called Showstopper, and it was actually black red. I feel like I should play that in the Rakdos deck just because it, you know, there's a foil consigned event. What is that? Three foils so far? And then a spawn of mayhem. That's a mythic. I hadn't really been keeping track of the mythics yet. I'll have to we'll have to look at that when we get through. Four mana, four, four, flying trample. This is amazing. You don't even need to do anything else. At the beginning of your upkeep, it deals one damage to each player, and then if you have ten or less life, put a counter on it. Hmm. Simic Ascendancy. I'm not going to be short on Simic Ascendancies at any point in time. I think I pre-ordered 16 of these. Uh, it is ridiculously cheap right now. It's less than a buck. I think I gave 50-something cents for mine. And this is going to be played forever in Commander. I mean, it really is. Uh, Electra Dominance. Now, this is a card some of the EDH rec guys were excited about. And I didn't know what it did, so I just went on. Deals X damage to any target at instant speed. Okay. You may cast a card. What? So if X equals 5, you get 5 damage plus 5 drop at instant speed. You may. Oh, and it, it ignores timing restrictions. So you can do it on their turn because it's an instant. Shoot them for 5, drop a creature. Boy, that affects combat, doesn't it? Huh. That's really strong. Really, really strong. Basically, we turn a bunch of little lightnings into one big lightning. We've got Absorb. That's nowhere near as awesome as it was the first go-around in, like, Invasion Block. That used to be, a, like, a $20 card back then because, you know... I don't know. It may see awesome play now just simply because, you know, burns a thing. I don't know. Of course, it's not new to us. We have Clear the Mind. Three mana sorcery. Shuffle their graveyard in their library. Draw cards. Okay. Are the They made new fonts. Whenever you pay life, put that many blood counters on this. Remove four blood counters. Destroy target creature. Why did my mind instantly go to uh, original Marchesa? Because with original Marchessa, we've got that, what is that, unspeakable symbol that we use to keep our life down. You pay three life to get a plus one, plus one counter. Uh, life payment deck. I don't, I don't know that I've gone that route yet. We have Warrant and Warden. We're going to try to do this. This card right here won me games today. Yes, it did. 
uh, put attacking creature back, or get a four four sphinx. I actually used both sides of it to out the pre release, and it was pretty good. Not gonna lie. I used Warrant twice and Warden once because I just needed a big old blocker. And then, oh, Bedevil. Now, just because of the name, it's going in Rakdos. Um, because he does care about the devils and whatnot. Uh, well, I, I don't know. If I go the devil route with it, then maybe I will. But if I go the imp or the demon route, maybe not. Still haven't decided. I figure... I feel like the demon route is way, way super easy, and a lot of people are going to do it. It's a one mana, one, one, merfolk, wizard, mutant. Wow, those are all relevant. There are, there are mutant decks out there. Ooh. I wonder if I can use Dovin Bond as Professor X and have Xavier's School of the Gifted with all mutants. Hmm. Whenever one or more 1-1 one, one counters are put on this, draw a card, then discard a card. That's cool. Yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, Xavier's School for the Gifted. And there's a Godless Shrine for Tasa if we pull a Tasa. I've got one more pre-release tomorrow. Uh, we're going to do... Try to do some special things at uh, uh, the shop. It's a good friend of mine. I've known for a long time. He's got a shop. Oh my gosh. I don't know what it is, but that's gorgeous. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness or its power. Okay. Butt fight. Uh, creatures you control can attack as they didn't have Defender. Untap a dude. Huh. On an enchantment for three mana. Okay. Well, I guess this is a backup plan in case our dragon gets killed too many times. Hey, it's this guy again. We've already seen him once. That's all right, though. Perfect for that. Hello, Kindling. Oh, my God. I love it. And we got mass manipulation. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. I feel like there's so much better to do with your mana. What is ethereal absolution? Creatures you control get bigger, creatures you don't control get smaller. Exile target card from opponent's graveyard. If it was a creator, you get a 1-1 one, one, now 2-2 two, two, white and black spirit token. That seems really good in like Orzhov tokens. I don't think I've gone there yet either. Orzhov tokens? I'm pretty sure I haven't. Huh. It's got Tasa and Kaya. Oh. This is like the Orzhov box here. Love the Kai's Wrath. I, I knew as soon as I heard that the Kai was in there, I was like, well, She's killing the Ghost Council, because she's one of the only people that can. I mean, she's a Ghost Slayer. But yeah, th this is actually a four-mana wrath that I really, really like. Hey, look, is Judith. Now, by the way, this art is phenomenal. I love it. It is gonna, it is gonna pop big time in foil. I didn't see a pre-release version of, of this. I, I, my pre-release card was that. Uh, white card with my creatures getting indestructible at the end of turn with it in them. Uh, return up to two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So we can't just have two cards. It's got to be two permanents. Which in mono green, eh, it's probably not that big a deal. And then of course we got a hollow fountain. I have not looked at the art yet for this. So it's, eh, it's a pretty standard thing for hollow fountain, I guess. Now, I haven't been looking through the comments, because uh, I do need to look through the comments, because Persistent Petitioners is uh, a comment that, obviously, I want about 40 of. We have Plaza of Harmony. When Plaza of Harmony enters the battlefield. If you control two or more gates, you gain three life. Tap for colorless. Tap for one mana. Of oh, 
So it's a Felwar gate land. Uh, why is it, why is this not a gate? Oh, okay, because of the trigger questions. When it enters the battlefield, that that would be confusing to some players. I, I see two or more gates. So, and it would probably make it a little too good if this is a gate. If you had one other, yeah, okay, I'll buy that. Still good, and I'm probably going to put it in the gate deck. Uh, along with all the other cards in this set. But I'm not going to do it right now because y'all know I just built the gate deck, what was it, two or three weeks ago? Um, I'll put a, like a copy of each one in the deck box there and, and just kind of hold it. But I feel like we're going to get more gate shenanigans in War of the Spark. We have repudiate and replicate counter target activated or triggered ability and make a token as a copy. Uh, very cynic things. I can see me doing both of them. That's the that's the good part about the split cards is that you can always tell a good split card is if it's something that you can see yourself doing both. Hydroid Crassus, Jellyfish Hydra Beast. Okay. Cast a spell, you gain half X, draw half X, but it enters with X. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this guy. Does have flying and trample. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not exactly certain how I feel about him. I'm sure I'll play it. And in a big mana deck, I'm sure he's amazing because even, uh, what is that? Let's say we make it four. Two colorless and blue-green. So X equals two. So we're getting a two-two flying trample. Gaining one life, drawing one card. You know, I would play that. I would play that. We got Smothering Tide. I think I've got a full Smothering Tide. Whenever opponent draws a card, that player may pay two. If the player doesn't, you get a treasure. Yeah. Seems like I sleeved the copy, or I, I profited the copy of this earlier. Either that or I got it in my seal pool, and I was like, nah, fam, I'm not playing this. Whoa. But here, let me go ahead and perfect fit this joker, or profit it, rather. We're going uh, to. Yeah. Biomancer's Familiar, or as y'all know how I'm going to play it, it's Memnarch's Familiar. And then, what's our other rare in there? Precognitive Perception. Oh my gosh, can I build a deck with all P's? No, well no, I can't because there's no basic land that starts with P. Dang it. I draw three cards. If you cast it during your main phase, instead scry thieve and draw three. That is power. Now, granted, you are tapping out. You're taking the turn off to do it. But I guess if there's no immediate threat, you know, it's all good. Hey, there's a persistent petitioner right on top. I know I haven't been doing Collins, but we want to talk about this guy. Because he, I mean, he's the first non-black card with that last line. Um because we've had three cards before this. This makes number four. And they were all black. Two rats and one cleric. But the tap, the fact that this is an advisor and you tap four untapped advisors to mill 12, I so bad want to draft like in an 11-player, yeah, 11-player draft of this set. Mainly because that's the most amount of drafters that were will allow at one table. Because if you get the 12th, it splits it up into two six-person pods. Uh, but, man, and just draft all the persistent petitioners. And, you know, milling 12 in a 40-card format is amazing. Milling 12 in any format is amazing, especially when all you're doing is tapping four dudes. Now, the fact that it can have you can have any number of them... Hey, y'all remember that Sphinx from way back that said, discard two non-land cards that have the same name to draw four? What? And then you 
before you know you just mana severage yourself once you get that sphinx out so you don't stumble across any more lands and you just put your library into your hand. Hey, y'all know Lab Man's uncommon now, right? Yeah. That's a fun deck. Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Two mana, one, two. Sacrifice two other creatures. Any number of target player, any number of target players, each lose two life, sacrifice a creature, you add double black, and draw. What? How is this not? How's this not mythic? Oh my gosh. This is. There's something about this that tells me this is a mistake. They didn't know. Well, I mean, I. I have a lot of faith in play design and good old fashioned R and D, but yes, you have to sacrifice two other creatures in a color that wants to sacrifice its own stuff. Even if you're just running this with, you know, the afterlife guys, or God forbid, you get something like the. Um, the dictate and uh, I can't remember grave pact. Um, draw a card, two mana, the, and e e any number of target players. So that's what makes it great for our format is that you can play favorites, you can make deals, you can okay. You won't have to lose a life and sack a creature. Wow, I like this card. I don't know exactly where it's going. Well, I mean, I, I do know it, it, it's going to go in some kind of sacrifice theme deck. I know I, I've done that before, but this wants it hard. This wants sacrifice to the nth degree here. We have a thirsting shade. Is that a one mana shade with lifelink? Oh, it's triple costed shade. Three mana to get plus one, plus one. Still, it's a one mana, one mana life lane. I have a shade deck. Was it uh, is in shade? I think. And this is shiny, so it, it will probably have to go in that. We have a regular Biomance is familiar. Memnarch's familiar. To fair or Urtai's familiar. Whatever. No, Urtai's familiar is actually a card. <laughs> but the show does help Urtai. In our last pack, we got another mythic. The now. I have yet to build Selena Dark Angel, but this one right here kind of makes me want to go Orza of Angels. I almost combined that into one word. Orza Angel? Angel of? Uh, I don't know. The artwork here is absolutely gorgeous. Magali just, oh my God. This is one of those, uh, I wouldn't mind like the, um, you know, the art for this one. Oh, yeah. But four mana, fourth power, and afterlife two, and the ability to give it vigilance and death touch. It's probably I'm probably doing this this Orzov Angel thing. It'll have really good removal, won't it? But anyway, let's look here and see what we've got as far as what our breakdown was. We got. Let's see if we can pull it up here so we can. Okay, we got Mythic Rare Foil. Rare. Foil Rare. It's two Mythics. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Uh, there's not a heck of a lot of like high money in this particular set. So, I mean, it... It's it's not. I don't think that there was a a Willy Wonka golden ticket in the in the set. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's a uh, I didn't put the other legends out, did I? Oh, four mythics. Uh, so so. Uh, let's see. I think we just got the one full rare, didn't we? Yeah, four mythics. 
Oh no. Two full rares. And of our the legends that of course I need every single one because you know this is day one. Actually, this is day minus something because the set is not even out yet. So let's see. I thought I got yeah, Judith. So there are eight legends in the set, and I did just pull four. Now, I guess technically speaking, I pulled five because when you pre-order your box and you go to your local game store, you get the Halt of Hightower. Now, yeah, it's not Nexus of Fate, it's, uh, but it's, you know, it, it is a legendary creature. I am going to build it, and I think it, it'll be decent. So there is, uh, I've got five. Five of the eight that I needed. So that's not bad. That's, that's really, really not bad. Well, that is what I have got for today. I do appreciate y'all watching, but uh, I've got some sorting to do, and I've got some deck to build. So I will see y'all tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow will probably be late as well because I would like to uh, get another pre-release in, to be honest with you. So, and to be frankly honest with you, I may flood content tomorrow. There may be a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, I appreciate y'all watching, and we will see y'all tomorrow.